What's going on, smart people? This is clearly not Andrew. This is an imposter. This is his little sister or something. No. The beard is gone. It's it's no longer with us. Really short video today because I'm really just going to be talking about how I spent three hours searching for a factor of four. And in talking about this, I'm really going to be talking about one of the most frustrating things that came along with an internship in theoretical physics in my experience, which is just not really having the strongest intuition for the math associated with all of it. Like when something goes wrong, it's hard to say, where did I probably make a mistake? Don't get me wrong, I consider myself pretty capable when it comes to math, but when you have one equation that has integrals in both coordinate space and momentum space, contracting tensors, uh, Fourier transforms, all in one little thing, it's hard to keep track of where all the moving pieces are going. You know that equation that I showed you the other day where we were expressing the differential cross-section in terms of the leptonic and hadronic tensor? Well, today I had to derive it. And it was a really good exercise to do. I feel like I understand the equation at a much deeper level now and in much more detail. But God, really what it came down to is there's this thing called the transition amplitude. And it is, it's an invariant quantity and it's written in terms of something that looks very, very similar to the leptonic and hadronic tensor. But it's not quite. But usually whenever you see it, you're summing over all the possible states and there's some delta function thrown in there as well, in which case it is exactly the contraction of the leptonic and hadronic tensor. If this means nothing to you, just, just bear with me for a second. Um, in literature, in, in actual papers, it's assumed that you sort of do that, so they write it as if it was just those quantities. And in the hadronic tensor, there is a factor of 4 pi cubed that I was really looking everywhere for. I was trying to create it out of thin air. You know, I didn't have the intuition to be able to say, you know what, they're probably calling it this when it's not exactly quite those two tensors contracted, uh, but I see what they're saying that you wouldn't write it unless you were summing over blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. I guess what I'm getting at is it's really frustrating when you can't identify sort of the convention that someone is, is using because it's not it's clearly not conventional to you because you're new at the whole thing, right? You know what, I'm, I'm speaking math and I shouldn't be doing that. Let me just show you real quick what I'm trying to say here. So you see this M here, this is what I'm calling the, the transition matrix, or the transit, yeah, the transition amplitude rather. And the convention is to write it in terms of these L mu's, L mu, or L mu nu's and W mu nu's, which look like the leptonic and hadronic tensor. So naturally, when I see those, I write it in terms, this is the hadronic tensor right here, one way of expressing it. Um, but what they really mean is the part, it's, it's really, they're talking about matrix elements, which is like this little thing here of this J, of this current. And so they're just talking about the matrix elements as a whole, which are inside of the tensors, but not the tensor itself. And that's, that's a convention that I was not used to because I was just learning about it. So you see that this, is conveniently missing a factor of 4 pi cubed. I'm not going to get into how I was how I obtained a pi squared instead of the entire thing, but just know that that happened. I'm sorry if none of you really give a shit about the math associated with what I've been doing, but I mean make a video every single day. Sometimes you got to talk about what you did that day. And unfortunately, I spent my day looking for a 4 pi. On the brighter side of things though, since I finished that exercise, that means I can get back to coding. You see, sometimes, it, this is what I do really like about doing these kind of theory internships, is uh, sometimes coding can be just a pain in the ass. And it's almost the same thing where it's like you're too close to the puzzle to see like what you're doing wrong. It's like an Easter egg hunt or finding a needle in the haystack for the, for the real problem that you have. Uh, so, especially with coding, because sometimes it'll still spit out an answer and you want to be like, that's not the right thing, give me the right thing. So it's nice to be able to be in a field to where if I get really sick and tired of coding for the day, I can go switch to doing some math on paper or vice versa. So that's always a plus. But yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say for this video. I'm probably going to spend a little bit of the night working on my code a little bit more and then just, just relax. Let me know in the comments section if you do like, ex especially if you do like experimental stuff, do you just have days where you just spend so much of your time doing something to where after you figure out what was going wrong, you're like, I can't believe that's all it was. I feel like it's easy to do that for like theory stuff because it's so quantifiable. Like I'm missing a factor of two, but if you're doing experiment, it's like, what, I, I turned a knob not far enough or I, I don't know. I don't do experiment. I put batteries in the remote wrong. So let me know in the comments section what gets you frustrated about your field or the thing that you enjoy doing. 
and I'll see you guys there.